Hi everyone. Welcome to this quick tutorial on doing a flow duration curve in Excel based on USGS stream gauge data. So uh, after the last video, you see I've got my data imported here. So starting at October 1st of, in this case, water year 2006. Uh, but this is October 1st, 2005, all the way through to September 30th of 2006 at the bottom of this data file. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is get a uh, ranking of the different flows that are in our uh, river here. So there's a couple of different ways to do this, but the easiest way is to go ahead and sort the data to begin with. So if you select all of the data by clicking on the, the actual column names at the top and click and drag, you can select all of the data. And then on your ribbon, if you go to the data tab, you can go to sort. And then we're going to sort by our discharge queue in this case. And we'll do smallest to largest. That's fine. Okay, so that sorts all of the data from smallest to largest. And then what we're going to do is actually get the rank of each value uh, in this entire list. And so the easiest way to do that is with a function in Excel called uh, rank average. So we're going to type in a new column header here, call this rank. And so in our first cell here, we're going to say equals, and then the function is rank average. And so it should pop up as you type. So it'll be the first option. So you can click on that, double click on it. And this needs uh, two arguments. One is the number we want in the ranking. And then two is the entire list of our um, the, the possible values for it to look at. So in the number section, we're just going to go over here and click on our first discharge value. And we're going to hit comma to get to the, the reference array is what it's called. And so in that case, we're going to click on the first value here again, but we're going to drag all the way down to the bottom of our list here. So you should have 365 rows, hopefully. And then we can go back up to the top and we can hit um, the close parentheses and we can say enter on that. And so you can see that that gives us a rank of 364. So that makes sense. That's the lowest value in our, our um, discharge array here. So we wouldn't expect a rank lower than that because we only have 364 data. But the trick to actually making this easy is that we want to be able to drag that equation all the way down so that we can copy and paste it to all of those subsequent rows. But the thing that we have to do is we actually need to lock in the reference array values here. So there's the, the primary way that you lock cells in Excel or lock references in Excel is with um, dollar signs. So I'm going to actually zoom in here a little bit so you can see this a little bit easier. So with this selected, you can go in and you can put in dollar signs in front of either the column name or the uh, row number and lock in that reference. So you can do it, this would lock in the row, so it would be whatever column, but locking in the second value. Or if we do $D, $2 in this case, that's going to lock it to that D2 cell exclusively. Okay. So in this case, we do want to lock both the, the row and the column. So we're going to do $D, $2 to lock it to the first value in our array here. And then on the second number here, we'd want to do the same thing, but I'll give you the shortcut here is actually if you use the, the F4 key on your keyboard, the function 4 key, if you hit that, um, it will automatically run through the different locking options uh, for that value. 
So locking both the column and the row. If you hit it again, it'll lock just the row. And if you'll hit it again, it'll lock just the column. So, and then if you hit it one more time, it will go back to being uh, not locked. So if we'll just hit it once and that'll give us that lock. So your, oops. So your, um, your equation should look like this. So we're gonna get the, the average rank of cell D2 over a locked version of our entire list of discharge values here. So we can hit enter. Our number doesn't change. But now what we can do is we can actually grab the little um, handle down here in the, the lower right and we can click and drag and drag this all the way down to the bottom of our array. And that'll get us all the way to our first value here. So our, our rank one is our highest discharge in this data set, which is our bottom value here. And so now we are set to actually do some math on this to actually get our flow duration. Okay. And so in your lab, um, there is a, an equation for you. Um, so right down here, okay. Copy that and put it into Excel so we have it just for reference. Okay, so that's the equation that we want to actually put in to our cell here. And we're going to use M is our rank. And N is just the number of values that we have. Okay. So in that in the equation there. So in our first cell here, we're actually going to say equals. So we're going to do 100 times parentheses M is our rank. So we're going to do click on our rank value or rank cell there divided by n is the number of cells. And so since this is a year's worth of data, we have 365. And then we want to do plus one. You could just type in 350 or 366 here. Okay, we'll close parentheses on that and then close one more parentheses to finish out that equation. And we'll say, okay. So what this number is now telling us is that this lower value, okay, the flows, the flows here are exceeded, okay, 99.45% of the time during this year, okay. So these are our lowest flows, therefore there's 99% of our data are above this, okay. And so what we can do now is just, again, grab that little handle in the lower right and drag this to copy it to all of our subsequent cells okay all the way to the top okay and what you'll see in this top column our highest discharge here is that that number goes basically to zero okay so in this case this is 0.27 percent of the time flows have exceeded this value okay and that's just a quirk of the statistics but again that's just a very very low um exceedance probability basically or exceedance percentage for this value okay and so if we go up into our data we can actually see where we have some certain key statistics so if we go find the number 50 here okay so that means that this discharge 125 cubic feet per second is kind of our if you want to call it our average value for our flow duration curve so 50% of the time flows are higher than this and 50% of the time flows are lower than this. Okay, and there's other places like 75%, 25%, 10% that you can find by just going through and looking through this flow duration value uh, to find those specific values. So the last thing you might wanna do with this is to actually create a graph. And generally, the way that we graph flow duration is in a uh, scatter plot. 
So we can go up to our insert tab here. We're going to go to our charts, insert a XY scatter plot. Okay, we can right click on this and we'll select data. Okay. And in your lab, this uh, we a I ask you to um, make a XY scatter plot with discharge on the Y axis and P, which is our flow duration uh, percentages on the horizontal axis. So in our uh, edit data here, we're gonna say our X values are our flow durations. So you can just click and drag to highlight all of those cells. Okay, and you can hit enter. And then our Y values are our discharges. So we can start at the bottom and click and drag all the way to the top. Okay. And you can give this a series name if you want to. Flow duration. Okay. And then we can say OK. And so that's our basic graph of flow duration. Okay. So our high values have a low exceedance probability and our low values have uh, kind of a high exceedance probability here. So the last thing that you want to do is put in some labels. Okay. So you can do that by on the, the chart design tab here. You can go to add chart element, access titles, put in a primary horizontal and a primary vertical okay. and then you can um, label these okay so we'll call this P and we'll call this Q and this is in cubic feet per second as our units okay. P we can put percent okay. and so the other things that we can do to make this a little bit easier to read okay, is we can actually change the automatic um, x-axis scaling here by clicking on these numbers and then in the format axis tab over here or uh, options okay, we can go to axis options and we don't need to go above 100 okay, so we can do that and that gives us nice um, kind of 10 percent uh, uh, grid lines on there Okay, and so that makes it fairly easy to read. So again, you could go in here and interpret this again to say if you wanted to look for the 50% uh, point, okay, you could just go up here and look that it's, you know, it's about it's a little over 150 cubic feet per second. Okay, we know it was 125. Okay, so there's our 50%. We can go down to our 10% is about 800% or 800 cubic feet per second. So that only 10% of the time flows exceed 800 cubic feet per second. And that's how we would normally interpret this graph. So that's how to make a flow duration curve uh, in Excel.